Good afternoon again, First Baptist Church of Delmar, Maryland. This is Pastor James Riddle. I wanted to point out something to you from Bill Mounts' book, Basics of Biblical Greek. Uh, it's a book I promoted a day or two ago, uh, which is it's a good book to get if you don't know the language or don't know it very well and you're trying to refresh and learn the language. Uh, Bill Mounts has a great pedagogical technique. He is a wonderful teacher, and he's got a great website, technia.com, that him and Miles Van Pelt work on. And that way you can learn Greek and Hebrew on your own. Uh, it's, and it's not easy to, to learn it on your own. You have to work hard. You don't have to be a rocket scientist, but you have to be dedicated and, and study and, and keep up with it. But I wanted to point out something here that um, Dr. Mounts pointed out in his book. Um, he actually uh, took this article from a great grammar. Um, I'm sure he probably knows Dan Wallace personally. But Dan Wallace wrote an intermediate grammar called Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics, uh, which would be this book right here. And there is a shortened version of this book called The Basics of New Testament Syntax. Well, in Bill Mount's book, he has a shortened article which would represent uh, part of what's on pages 266 to 269 of Dan Wallace's grammar, okay? Uh, so I'm not going to read this whole article to you, but I'm just going to give you an idea of what he says about John 1.1, 1, 1, okay? What I'm giving you today is not enough to, you know, take the educated JW that's at your door, sit them down, and shoot down every argument they've ever uh, told. But what it does do is it does show you that there are people that have got good credentials, that know what they're talking about, that understand the heresy that's being taught by Jehovah's Witnesses. Now, in this article, we read there were three different ways that John 1, 1, C could have been written. That's a third part of John 1, 1. It could have been written this way. Kai halagas ein hatheos, and the word was the God. Okay? Now, if you would have taken it that way, if it would have been written that way, it would probably have been taken as what's called Sibelianism indicating that Jesus and the Father are the same person, which they're not. Now, literally, technically, word by word, it doesn't say that, because God obviously refers to the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the way that was written in that time, in that context, in that syntax, probably would have been a Sibelian interpretation, okay? So, if it had said, Kai halagas ein hatheos, and the word was the God, literally, it probably would have been a Sibelian interpretation that would have been demanded. Then there is another one, that, that, another way it could have been written. Kai halagas ein theos, and the word was a God. Now that probably would have meant what the Arians say, that Jesus was just a God. There's a third option here, kai theos ein halagas, uh, and it, it, it's what's called the predicate nominative being used here. And the way it was written, and the word was God. So without that definite article, it still means and the word was God. And that is the orthodox position. So just to let you know of, of some people that have struggled with John 1.1, 1, 1, have looked through the, uh, the possible interpretations, um, and have come out believing in orthodoxy that have good credentials. One is Bill Mounts, and of course the other is Dan Wallace. But for a much easier uh, understanding of the book of John, um, I think piece by piece, I believe Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus Christ, and the Gospel of John would be easier, an easier read for someone with a limited knowledge of Greek. Uh, just to let you know that what they're saying is not true, and it can be backed by 2,000 years of scholarship. God bless. Thank you.